Hello and welcome back. It's Carrie with the Gilded Bubble and today I'm going to be making a seasonal soap that is inspired by, of course, St. Patrick's Day. I'm calling it Luck of the Irish because Irish Spring was already taken. Um, <laughs> but I'm using several shades of green. The first one is Emerald Green from Small Meaning. Um, I actually use that for my soap canes. Um, I'm using Fruit Green, also from Small Meaning. Uh, I'm using Crazy Eyes from Mad Micah's they were gracious enough to give me that sample. I love their samples. And Evergreen Mica from Brambleberry. Also, I'm having a hard time getting things in frame yet again. And I'm using the scent Backwoods Hike from Brambleberry. This scent, I know I say this, I buy a lot of scents that I really love, but this one is amazing. I don't typically like outdoorsy scents, and I love this one. Um, for my embeds here, I actually am using melt and pour. I don't normally do that, um, but I, I needed to get this one done. It wouldn't have been done on time had I um, used a cold process soap. So I made three little soap canes for my uh, brambleberry mold, and I'm using these heart-shaped molds because when you put three hearts together, you make a shamrock. Um, mine doesn't turn out perfectly straight, but that's okay. You know why? Because soap doesn't have to be pretty. It just has to get you clean. Even though pretty soap is the goal here. Um, <laughs> but I'm using my standard, you know, um, sodium hydroxide uh, and water solution for my lye. Um, and I'm mixing that in with my base recipe. This is my same shea butter, castor oil, olive oil, coconut oil, and palm oil recipe that I use for all my soaps. Um, and I'm just going to stick blend this just about to an emulsion because I'm going to do a drop swirl around my shamrocks. What I probably should have done with the shamrocks is kind of glued them, quote unquote, together um, using melt and pour just so that they would have stuck together better. better. I thought they were going to be sticky enough to hold themselves, but you'll see here in a minute when I go to pour this, uh, my soap just displaces them and it still turns out really cute. They're close enough together. You get the idea. Um, but I think it would have been stronger. And then plus they sunk to the bottom. So, um, you know, they're just sticking out, but, um, I'm going to divide my batter up here between my colors. I'm also going to throw in some titanium dioxide because I think that always adds something to a swirl to have a much lighter color or a much darker color. Uh, and so I wanted to go with white here, but I'm splitting my batter up into about eight ounces a piece for my colors. And that's going to give me kind of equal amounts of each color. I think I did a little less on the white. I can't remember. Maybe I did more. I did more on the white. Um, and so I'm going to get these mixed up and then I'm going to do an in the pot swirl, which I hardly ever do. So for me, I think the last in the pot swirl I did was that custom order um, that I made for an author friend of mine, which if you have murder books, you should go read them. Melissa Banzac, uh, or Banksack. Oh crap. I probably should ask my friend how to say her last name. Do you ever know how you like know somebody and you predominantly know them in like an online environment and then you meet them in person and you only talk, refer to them by first name. So you never actually learn how to say their last name. That's me. Um, but I'll put a link to that in the notes. Um, because she's just amazing. Her books are amazing. Uh, she writes Cozy Mystery. It's the June Nash series. Uh, and they have really fun names like how to sex your snake, how to bungle your jungle, how to square your grouper. <laughs> and they sound really ridiculous, but that's because that's the kind of humor she writes. So I really love it. But anyway, I love all these greens. I think I said before, green's one of my favorite colors. So hey, um, <laughs> more green, the better as far as I'm concerned. Um, and then uh, I'm going to mix the scent in and go nuts. I don't know why I said go nuts. <laughs> it was just soap making, Carrie. You're not partying. Hey, there's my scent. Oh, that backwoods hike though. It is really fresh and outdoorsy, but without, I don't know, it's not super floral. Where I don't like scents is the really, really strong perfumey floral ones give me a headache. So personally, I don't like them. I know some people just love them. Um, and so I don't do a lot of floral or outdoorsy things just for that reason. Um, if I do florals, they're sweet florals um, and stuff like that. Um, my titanium dioxide is pre-dispersed in water there. Um, and I'm just going to straight up add that to this batter and then blend it. Now just you wait though, because when I have to stick blend this in here with the TD to make it disperse evenly, it thickens up my batter a little bit because, you know, TD accelerates your trace. We know this, kids. We know it, right? If we've been soaping for any amount of time, we know that. And yet, and yet. Um, but
but yeah, I'm putting about two tablespoons in here. So that's going to equate to two teaspoons of TD roughly. Um, when you disperse it like that, it can kind of, you can get a little bit stuck to the bottom. Um, but it's going to come out nice and white. I'm not going to have this creamy color. The other thing I probably should have done is gone ahead and just hand blended this with a nice thick stroke. Um, because again, my scent does not accelerate. It's just that TD. And it's about to look a little gloopy, folks. But, you know, that's okay. It does actually, the swirl turns out really good. And I think actually the gloopiness of the white worked to my advantage because I get these nice bold spots of white in it. And I don't know, I just think that makes the green stand out more. So it just gives it a little bit more interest. But what I find fascinating with titanium dioxide is my batter is going to look like this. But when I get that in and it starts to saponify, that's going to come out really, really white. So um, I've never personally, knock wood, had a problem with um, my titanium dioxide making my soap chalky. I have had glycerin rivers, so that's just from the water that you disperse it in. Um, but you know, hey, everybody everybody has different things and I'm sure it'll happen to me one day. God knows I love to screw things up or, you know, try to experiment and then I'm like, why did I do that? I know better. Like when I broke my multibar cutter because I was cutting through soaps that were from two different cure times in one in one loaf and I knew better and I heard them snap and I kept going and I have like seven broken wires. <laughs> this is so fun though. I love watching in the pot swirls. I, I don't know why I don't do them more. I think it's because they're more unpredictable. So I, I'm a bit of a control freak. You wouldn't think that to be true based on my messiness, but that is true. I am a control freak. Ah, look at that lovely lime green color. Yes. Starts to look like um, one of those like spearmint, like peppermints that you, like the star bright ones or whatever from Brock's. That's what that reminds me of. See if I could just leave it like that. I would love it. Look at that. Just stay like that. And then of course, I'm not going to need really a whole lot for the top, but I am going to leave just enough in my pictures that I have something to scrape onto the top because I'm going to do a faux Taiwan swirl on the top of the soap. But the best part about this is it's ready to go. All I got to do is pour it in. Ha <laughs> ha. Except for Carrie, you have these canes that you have to put in your soap that you did with those lovely heart shaped molds. And, uh, remember I told you that they move around a little bit. Uh, yeah, that's about to happen. Uh, and here I go. Oh wait, I should probably pour in a little bit first. See how much gloopier? <laughs> It's all different textures because they're all different colors and oh lord but look at how pretty that swirl is and then I put my little I should have put a little more soap on the bottom live and learn I also shouldn't have put them as close to the edge because I did have a few bars that cracked and I had to fill it in with some um, soap from the inside of it but it came out okay and again I should have just stuck these together here I go pouring more soap in um, I should have stuck them together with some melt and pour before I put them in the loaf mold. But see, I should have pushed those over. Oh, what are you doing? I see exactly what I did wrong now. Like while you're doing it, you're like, oh yeah, I'm doing great, I'm doing great. And then it comes out and you're like, shit, what did I do wrong? And um, I can see exactly what I did wrong here. Although it looks great right now. I'm like, oh yeah, that looks great. No, it doesn't carry. Your bottom one is too close to the edge. You need to come in just a little bit. Your top one, it's just not lined up. <laughs> It does make a really cute soap though, guys. I, 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 always, I hate to always like make fun of myself because then it's kind of like, well, then why should I buy your ugly soap? It has the big gloopy white sections in it from the TD. Do you see that? There's like little white islands in there. Um, but like I said, those turn out really cute because the way that they land in there, like you can see how they all come off together. Um, and then I took the leftover batter and I put it in these because I knew when I displaced it, I was going to have some of that. But um, these are real great because I'll do these as gifts for somebody. Um, with the same, you know, same swirl and everything. But yeah, I knew I was going to have some displays and I didn't want to do math. Does anybody else feel that? You feel me on that one? Yeah. I didn't want to do the math because the last time I tried to math my soap, um, well, actually that's not true. The last time I mathed my soap, <laughs> I like how I'm using math as a verb. Um, the last time I had to do math for a soap, I did a striped layered one and I split it up so that I'd have time to, I'd have time for it to set in between. And that actually turned out, but that's because I didn't learn my lesson. Um, one of my, my cat soaps, I didn't do the measurement right. Didn't have enough lye in it. It never saponified properly. I still have a bar that I kept after I salvaged what I could from it. Um, and it's still not hard. It's still very, very, it's like soap dough that will never set. Um, <laughs> so I learned my lesson that math needs to be done before you start and not while you're soaping. And that rather than me master, I, I, I am not in a position to master batch my lie yet. That's, that's where I screwed up. I didn't measure correctly. So, um, 
<laughs> live and learn. But uh, anyway, so try. I didn't want to try to do that math and potentially screw this up because I really wanted to get it done um, when I filmed it that weekend because I knew I needed it done before I went to some local markets right before St. Patrick's Day um, because this, you know, it's not going to be as popular after March 17th. So I really wanted to get it done. So the I'd rather, quote, waste some soap, which those won't be wasted. I'll either use them at home or give them away. But they, um, with, with that, you know, I'd rather that than ruin a whole batch. So, you know, I've only ever had one complete failure of a batch and I've had two that I was able to salvage part of to make a, another batch from. So I guess altogether, if I've s screwed up two half batches, then I've, and one whole batch, I've screwed up two whole batches. That's not too bad. I'm, you know, I mean, I wish I hadn't, right? That's money down the drain, but hey. So what I'm doing here is I'm scraping out my containers, putting a little bit, making sure I have a little bit of each color on the top. The only thing I don't have is the white, but that's okay because I've got quite a bit of white in the soap itself and I wanted just the greens on top. And uh, I'm gonna get out my handy dandy swizzle stick, which is actually just a uh, chopstick. And I'm going to kind of do a faux Taiwan swirl along this thing. So. So I cleaned up my surface a little bit and I'm going to now put this in my frame because again, I like to overfill my molds. In addition to having extra batter, I have way extra batter. Um, but this will help me too while I'm um, doing this swirl on top. It's gonna be a little bit easier to do because that those sides will be firm. I won't be moving them around. It's gonna be a really subtle swirl and you almost can't see it here because of the glare, um, but it's really pretty. In person, these are just gorgeous, gorgeous soaps. And like I said, I really love um, this scent. So that's literally all I have to do with that. I'm going to clean up the edge uh, and it's going to have to sit for 24 hours, but you get to see the cut in three, two, table's all clean, soap's ready to cut. Let's see what it looks like. I've got to unmold it first. So I'm going to grab my brambleberry mold here and just push it out. This one was still a little sticky. So I had to be a little more careful with it. You can see my soap canes that fell to the bottom there. Um, and you can see there where I have a couple little holes, little air pockets in there. But on the whole, I'm very happy with how this soap turned out. It's actually quite fab. I'm gonna cut off a little end piece here as a sample and realizing that, hey, that melt and pour is harder to cut. So you get to see my wrapped head. <laughs> see, that one kind of came off in a chunk, but that's okay. We don't even have to look at that one. In fact, I'm not even gonna show it to you cause it was a little bumpy, but that's okay. Cause that's a sample piece not a saleable bar. So I'm going to cut these bars one at a time. And I realized I probably wanted to turn it the other way because I don't want to break this wire. And then I have nothing to cut soap with except for a knife. And I'm horrible with cutting with a knife. And this first one, as you can see, has a little hole in it there. But that's not horrible. I actually filled those in. I was able to fill them in with a little bit of scrap soap. So it's not a, it's not a worry. Um, you know, it happens to the best soapers. Don't judge me. But I'm really happy with how this one came out. Um, the swirl is just, I mean, look at the bottom of it there. I mean, even the bottom of the swirl is pretty. Cutting it was not, but you know, hey, that's cutting through melt and pour for you. Another reason why I probably won't do that again. I've managed to keep everything kind of in the frame this time. However, I'm tilting my soap at a weird angle and not quite holding it in the center of the frame. But hey, you can see everything, which is more than I could say for pretty much everything else that I've ever done on this channel. But look how cute my crooked little shamrock is. There's another hole I need to fill. I'm <laughs> trying to quickly hide that. As we all do, cleaning off the wire in between each one. Really doesn't matter when you've got like a swirl like this that, you know, it, it you won't really get a drag mark through it. But sometimes if you have like layers or, or colored stripes or something, then it will matter. But I had a few, like you can see there where it snagged a little once it got through the melt and pour. And I can, I just planed that off. I didn't really have an issue with that. So, and then I also had some um, glycerin dew from that melt and pour that I had to wipe off. But actually on the whole, I'm really happy with how it cured. It's just about ready. I think it's got... I think by the time I post this video, it will be in the shop. So um, you'll be able to buy it if you like it. It just smells so good. I was just um, 
checking on it to make sure that it looks good and I'm not I'm still not getting any discoloration or anything and it looks fabulous it smells so good it's very fresh very clean um, kind of you know what's funny is I don't think the backwoods hike smells like Irish spring soap at all but it has that same kind of fresh outdoor scent that that smells like um, although not quite as artificial smelling so if you are a fan of that kind of a smell uh, this is just a lighter I think version of that personally in my own opinion scent is so subjective and I am so sensitive to scent I can smell something that I haven't smelled in years and be like I remember this from such and such and uh, that's what I did with um, my love note soap that's in the shop that I did for Valentine's Day um, the scent for that is bite me from nature's garden and I can, couldn't place the smell I was like what does this smell like and a friend of mine goes it smells like fruit stripe gum and I was like that's it and it smells exactly like it and except you know it, it lasts a little longer so there's the last bar I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up except for I've already done it haha ha, the power of filmmaking and then I'm gonna show you what this one turned out like <music> this video or just really love getting drunk on St. Patrick's Day, you might want to just give this video a like. Or you could leave a comment and tell me, hey, Carrie, I hate green. Don't ever make that soap again. Or maybe you just really love soap making and you'd like to subscribe to my channel. Whatever it is, I'm really glad you watched my video. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.